Welcome back to the CDV News. Well, hotel executive and UWP candidate for ancillary canneries, Dominic Fede, has made a call for the establishment of a national committee to examine what impacts the thawing of relations between Cuba and the U.S. will have on St. Lucia's tourism industry. He says the threats are very real. There's one uh, major cruise line that has announced a tour to Cuba uh, this year. Uh, and, and this in itself is a trend and an ind indication as to how things are going as travel restrictions uh, continue to be released and reduced uh, from uh, tourists from the United States traveling to Cuba, our major source market. So we want to address the situation frontally. So we're calling on the Minister of Tourism uh, to institute a national committee to come up with a strategy to deal with this Cuba situation. Uh, so that we can optimize the potential threats and opportunities. Dominic Fede believes that the traditional source markets will be thirsty to satisfy the curiosity about the communist isle. They get a million tourists from Europe, which is one of the leading, the leading um, tourist arrivals. They get over a million from the Latin American market, which is the best any Caribbean destination does. And they also get a million from the Canadian market, which is... Uh, number one for every single Caribbean destination. This in itself shows you the power of the Cuban brand and the mystique and the great attractions um, that they possess and the drawing power that they have for visitors the world over. So uh, the opening up of Cuba, while many experts have projected that it may affect the closer islands um, in the Northern Caribbean more than it does islands like St. Lucia in the Southern Caribbean, we are saying that um, we have to be concerned about their projection whereby our cruise ship arrivals can immediately be impacted, uh, especially in times of high oil prices where the cruise lines might be tempted to go into a position whereby they're looking to cut costs. Meantime, the improved relations between the U.S. and Cuba has led to a stunning 36% increase in visits by Americans to the island, including thousands who are flying into Cuba from third countries like Mexico in order to sidestep U.S. restrictions on tourism. The dramatic rise was seen in the number of Americans with no family ties to Cuba who visited between the 1st of January and the 9th of May this year, compared to the same period in 2014. In addition to the boom in American visitors, Cuba has seen a 14% jump in arrivals from around the world between January and early May compared to the same period last year. St. Lucia's ambassador to Cuba, Dr. Charles Isaac, in August, reported that there was an absolute shift being felt on the ground. Already we're beginning to see right, significant increases in tourism, and most of the tourists, in fact, are not coming from the U.S. at this point in time because there's still restrictions in this regard. But there are a lot of movement of tourists coming from other countries, Europe, um, Asia, right, um, you know, since the dec this decision taken by, by the Americans. Um, to the extent where there is an increase, I think, to about 16%, right, of tourism arrival in Cuba. But more than that, there are a number of things that are happening there. Um, Cuba has now... Um, or the U.S., from my information, has in fact approved licenses for, f for five um, ferry services, right, to provide, right, ferry services from Miami to Cuba. Um, this, is, this is significant because it allows for the movement of people and goods, right, very readily. Um, that did not exist before, um, except for the charter flights that would have been available to the diplomatic corps and, um, you know, Americans, Cuban Americans, and other Americans who would have first needed to have gotten a license right, to come to Cuba um, for, for non commercial purposes. So, what exactly are the stats? Well, from the 1st of January to the 9th of May, 51,458 Americans visited Cuba compared to 37,459 over that period last year. There were 38,476 visitors who flew directly from the U.S. to Cuba, compared to 29,213 last year. Cuba also has seen a 14% rise in overall tourism. Arrivals from 206 countries from the 1st of January to the 9th of May rose to 1.54 million this year. Visitors from Germany were up by 22%, France 25%, the United Kingdom 26%, and Spain 16%. 
Despite those figures, Sinush's ambassador believes that curiosity is driving the boom, which will eventually taper off. Most critically, Cuba's tourism caters to more of a mass market compared to Sinush's high-end offering. Fundamentally, when one looks at it very deeply, one would realize that, that Cuba, um, you know, the destination is one that is different in the sense that, that you know, people would come here to, to, to see what exists because of curiosity. And once that settles, then I think things would go back to normalcy, right? Um, I think what is important that we need to consider more than anything else, right, is not whether, right, um, there's going to be a movement of tourists from St. Lucia, for example, or other Caribbean countries to Cuba, but in fact how we can best use our resources and, and maybe some of the resources that we use for promotion to develop our individual products, right, tourism product, so that, you know, the tourism experience in St. Lucia would be an ex St. Lucian experience that in fact cannot be experienced anywhere else. And as such, if each country was to do that, right, including Cuba, what we then would, do, would have is a creation of a Caribbean environment with each country have its own unique um, product characteristics that would allow for um, what we normally refer to as multi-destination tourism, which for, from my standpoint is ideal in terms of, of our ability to compete with other destinations of the world. So to my mind, while there was maybe some, some, some influence right, um, you know, by Cuba opening up I don't think it's going to be so significant. Dr. Charles Isaac, Therese Lucia's ambassador to Cuba.